And the kids are popular books. They agreed to read a certain number of books over the time period. And or? they could, uh, it was completely self motivated, so actually, I've got a whole lot of sort of motivation theory as well. Um, and on my uh, blog, so you can want to fall asleep at night. <laughs> it's a bit too long. But um, it was very much self-motivated, uh, no requirement at all. They could drop out at any time. And that's where I found a couple, two of them uh, were so keen, lovely students. They said, yes, we'll be enrolled. Oh, I just want to hold the book. Like, I can't do it anymore. I'm like, that's fine. That's, that's perfect. That's what we wanted to know. So it was only the ones that just kept saying, oh, and I love the series that you got. Um, and also, like the whole series thing, I found that uh, we needed to have the whole series there in front of us. And like, have you got the whole series? And is it all by the same narrator? And yes, okay, I'll start on number one. So, uh, like, it's just, it's how I like to do it too. I want to know that the whole series is better. I just wish that the pictures would be better <laughs> on some of them. Like, obviously, the cover, that's the only visual that you get. For the audio book, so, um, well, what just happened, a little bit of feedback. Well, what, <laughs> what happens too is sometimes the series get broken up where it starts with one publisher and ends up with another publisher, mm -hmm. and that narrator yeah. doesn't follow, and there's all sorts of different issues and stuff like that. So, uh, if it's the same publisher all the way through, uh, very clear that publisher, uh, and we've learned as publishers the importance of you know maintaining that continuity and. Uh, you know, you really don't, and even when we're looking at reviews, you really don't want to change your narrator, even on poor reviews, unless they're just so horrible that you have to, it's a, it's a big decision to change. But frequently, series migrate sometimes between publishers, and that can be problematic. Yeah. So a big part of my research, too, is also the technical challenges of it. Like, and what format is it available in? And no, I want this book, and it's not on this platform. And so this is where, like, and then, uh, oh, it's not available, like when I go on holidays in America, it's available, it's not available in Korea, so I did, did my research in Korea. So yeah, the region rights are really, so yeah. we do need to know, like if um, certain countries want to become a consortium, um, we need to, they need to see a good list of what's available in their country, like if, if there is some restrictions, or a lot of restrictions from the publishers, mm -hmm. Is that that's something you could tell them beforehand that right, like right. We, don't, we don't have the rights. We well, I mean, there's two uh, two levels. I mean, there, you know, there there's the, sometimes when you're going to new marketplaces, it's that we're just trying to update those agreements to include that marketplace, in the, uh, and then you get with different levels of publishers that are either supportive of school libraries or not saying you know wait that cannibalizes sales. I'd rather sell all those books through exactly. Audible. And uh, so, you know, and then you, so you have the whole range from publishers that say no to publishers that say, well, of course it's updated. And then, you know, it, it, so there's, it's not as straight, we're learning it's not as straightforward, but we're also trying to set processes in place to make it simpler. And uh, regions, I think, will help too, because um, we, you know, know that we're very interested in Asia now, so yeah. we can start asking for more rights. Hello, and hello. it keeps changing, so yeah. that's really good. Like it keeps growing. Yes. Yeah. I think once you get past all of the, we, we all know that you know audio books are great, and we all really enjoy them, and you're helping us in every single way. The thing is, then how do we keep the momentum up? How do we get the people out there borrowing, and how do we make them feel good about them? And you know, it sounds horrible. Maybe it's something we don't even think about as, as librarians. It's all about marketing. And I think you can never let it stop because the minute you start dropping the ball on your marketing, you'll see your statistics starting to slide back again. And some of the best things about audiobooks that, that I really love is the fact that if a kid, so, so Sue mentioned kids wanted to be in a whole series. And we had this discussion around our collection development, and I said, no, I don't want to buy a whole series. Let's buy maybe one, two, and three. Because the beauty of an audiobook is when the kid comes and says, but I've now finished it. Oh, yeah, I'll get it now. And it's there for yeah. yeah. almost, almost instantaneous. Not as instantaneous as I'd like, Brian, but within. I'm taking notes out there because I will say that the people we were with before, when we purchased an audiobook, it was in our collection instantly. Belinda does take about 24 hours to get the book online. But I mean, to say to a kid, tomorrow that book will be here for you, that's super powerful. And once they start knowing you can do that, 
but never ever stop marketing it. So putting, you know, putting things in the notice for every single holiday, so putting something out and saying, especially in our context where everybody's travelling, you know, here you are, do you know we've got these books? And the other thing that was really important for us was getting enough books because when we even initially started, people were saying, yeah, but I'm going on there and I can't even borrow the book I want. And so we had to do some things that were a bit, um, that we wouldn't have normally done with collection development. So like that Michelle Obama book, I think we initially bought about three copies, didn't we? And then we just kept going back and buying more. And we saw how many people were waiting for it. We were buying more and more because we thought, if we don't start and do something for these people, we'll lose them and they won't come back again. So you have to be prepared have to do those kind of things right when you start off. But the marketing is the key. We've seen on those school tours, and you didn't see them right, but they're a great Belinda displays <laughs> all over KL, and you've got a great one. I think mine's a bit more than everybody anyway, but I think you've got a really good one here. Like, hey, can we share some ideas? Yeah. Those boxes. Yeah. Who would have scored a great one in his life? Sorry, it's not from Jake. To what percent are you marketing to the parents versus the students? Uh, or are you marketing to the parents at all? Yeah, we're marketing to everybody. So we're marketing definitely through our notices to the parents. I mean, the, the big thing when we, when we launched, and we have almost really badly environmentally unfriendly balloons, but <laughs> they, they focus the mind of the children, all those balloons. So things like that. So marketing to the kids in class, through the teachers, but never stopping marketing to the parents because that trickle down effect right. is, is really good. And the teachers are key too because if the teachers use it, they'll be more comfortable to. So that's one of the big things too is to get, um, you know, the teachers uh, just as we do like in the public libraries, those staff days because if they're using it, they'll be more inclined I think to feel comfortable teaching the kids and uh, and then just something maybe as simple as um, you know uh, getting. A few thousand of those little business card things that have the step one, two, three, four. Having an English teacher in the class talk about the library and, and how easy it is, and give every kid a little card to take home. Or even better, have them do it there. Or yeah, that's even yeah, better. Yeah, have like, a session. Bring, bring it there. Bring all the sixth graders in and their library. Bring your device. Now take out your device and, and let's give them all your. But that teacher probably needs to feel comfortable first before they, you know yeah. to do it. So those are things we can all work on. Is like how do we get those teachers to that level where they're feeling, yeah, let's do it. Oh, I was going to say about the, the trouble too is though, but audio books don't run out, do they? They, they, they once you buy audio books, it's for. Most of them, most of the publishers uh, are still in perpetuity, um, yeah. so they, they they don't have metered access. But there is some creeping in. Because that was an issue with ebooks when we first started testing our ebooks. You go into a classroom and say, "Everybody, open your device, download an ebook," and then you say, "Oh my God, that's a 26 use ebook," and the kids are downloading it and returning it instantly, and you've lost one of your uses. So be really careful when you're testing it out like that. That you check that it is something you can. Well, you know, you just brought up an interesting point. You know, maybe we should have uh, a title that uh, Barbox sponsors that we, you know, we publish ourselves and we make simultaneous access on it, uh, and then that could be used as a demonstration yeah. class. I'm just thinking out loud. And then we could be in a classroom and go ahead, and everyone could access that. And maybe it is a public domain book or whatever. But the point of the matter is. It is something, uh, you know, it won't be Harry Potter, but it, it could be a, you know, quality recording that we know, uh, you know, has by a professional narrator and all that, and then they can, you know, in the classroom, get yeah, the Wi-Fi. Really cool. The other thing I kind of wondered, like, because I haven't really played with the app, but what I would, um, you know, think of trailers, you know, movie trailers, mm -hmm. that if you were in a classroom and you put up on the screen, you say, these books are now available as audiobooks, but not just... So I have been on Audible, but this is like I want to test, I want to play something like a trailer so the kid hears the narrator, but it being like reading the back of the book blur, not necessarily just the first page, but something that then you could just sit with kids and, and play it on the, you know, on the screen. A sample. A sample, right. And then, that's, and then you could download the app and either play, go sample some books, which is not going to get into downloading, right? Yeah. One of the, oh, sorry, sorry, I know, but, no, 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 no. oh, I just wanted to share, um, we got Robux this year, we got Robux and then 
my, I was very blessed actually, our head of school, she's uh, an English teacher, and she was really, um, really sort of, really wanted to get on board with it. So she said, right, here's some money, ask every single teacher what book they would like to have in the, um, in Royal Box. And so there was quite a lot of options, most of the time it was like, yes, we had that one. So the minute we launched, they brought up the book that they wanted, and then they all come back to me and to the kids, oh, this is brilliant, I'm reading this. Even some of the last teachers, who they tell me that they like reading, they chose books like Maths on the Back of an Envelope and all of this, and they'd be like, this is actually really good. And they, because they um, have very good influence over the students, that's been really helpful. That's a good one. I've made a shop open to each of some teachers too. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, I was, I was just going to say, uh, my I have a different um, e-book, audio um, provider, but uh, I was noticing that my numbers were kind of falling, and so um, I put uh, the posters with some of the newest titles on the backs of the bathroom doors, and people often sit on uh, the toilet, I think, with their phones because there's QR codes for, and the instructions how to log in, and some of the newest oh. titles. And um, I tell you, every time I do one of those postering campaigns every couple of months, I see like uh, a real uptick in uh, demos. So, anyway.